Hi guys, it's good to be back again. A very warm welcome back to Motoring Adventures. And so in this episode, Bob is going on some travels to Tewkesbury, aren't you? Yep, yeah. indeed. I'm off to, do you remember, in September 2021, when we collected Resi the Motorhome. We did indeed, wasn't it? Great day, that oh, was. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. I'm sure you can all relate to that, the first day you pick up your motorhome. <laughs> yeah, It's definitely. just incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I'm going down to, it's a purely a chance conversation. Uh, as you'll remember, if you've seen the channel recently, you'll see we had uh, got some parts from Marquis in Tewkesbury to help me carry out some repairs on the habitation door, which went well. Thanks to Marquis for having the plots and getting to me within a day or so. Um, and uh, when I was chatting to them, they said they had a couple of new Kias in the yard. Um, Not parrots. No? Do no. they? Well, Kias, there's a, there's a parrot. There definitely New are, Zealand. yeah. Yeah, so talking. You, did you go and see some... Did you review parrots or a motorhomes? <laughs> I don't know what he does when he goes away. But I also thought I'd take them up on the uh, take them up on the offer, or ask whether I could come and fil film them, um, because Mobile Vetta have just um, changed within the last sort of twelve to eighteen months. They've changed all their vans to uh, four point four tons, which I know causes one or two issues with licenses because they're over three and a half tons, and you need the C one license to therefore drive. Um, if you are uh, or if you passed your test after 1997 uh, but um, 4.4 tons I have to say gives you a fantastic payload uh, and really does um, give you peace of mind when you're traveling that you're definitely not or at least you're very unlikely to be overweight so without further ado Time to hit the road. Nikki's deserting me, aren't you? Yeah. Deserting yes. me because it was such short notice. So I'm actually going to drive up in the car. But anyway, come along, come and have a look at some Kias and um, not the parrots. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, enjoy the film, guys. See you very soon. And look at that, as if by magic, from Tembi. And yes, we're back here. We're back here at Marquis. Do you remember that day in September 2021 when we had that fantastic trip down here to collect Resi the motorhome that was parked just outside the offices there here at Marquis in Tewkesbury? Anyway, so we've come here today because Marquis have got a couple of Kias in the yard, which are the two straight ahead of us there, a Kia P80 and a Kia P90, both obviously from the Mobile Vetter brand. And it was actually the Kias that were one of the first motorhomes that Nikki and I looked at when we were considering buying a motorhome, um, before we then started comparing all the brands, both within the Trigano group and of course the others, the Deflefs, the Heimers, you name it, we looked at them, um, the different internal layouts. And we ended up coming back to Mobile Vetter and uh, choosing, obviously, as you will have known and seen if you follow our channel, our K Yacht. Technoline 79, which we uh, absolutely love. But the discussions that we had with Marcus recently, uh, when they mentioned they had a couple of keys in the yard, I got thinking and thought that you guys might have liked to have, might like to have a little look round um, the two keys. Um, so we're going to start. We're going to break it into a couple of films, and uh, we'll start with the Kia at the back, which is the P90. Um, so keep an eye on the channel if it's not already there because we're may 23 now if it's not already there then the film of the p80 will be up very soon afterwards but um, certainly as i say we'll start off with the uh, p90 come and have a look at it we're going to get uh, around it in it through it and through every detail of it so if it's a p90 that you're thinking of and starting your motorhome life in or indeed upgrading to then we're going to show you all the ins and outs of this fantastic Mobile Vetter motorhome. So let's just start with the outside of the uh, Kia P90. I'll get some data up on the screen there, which just gives you an idea of the uh, lengths and heights, widths, and the sort of fluid carrying capacity of it. But it's a lovely, uh, I do like these greys and whites that the um, Italian builders have uh, done for these mobile vetters. I might be a little bit biased, of course, owning a mobile vetter, <laughs> but uh, but I still do like their uh, I still do like the way they're presented. Really nicely done. 
And now the difference between uh, the P90, which we're going to look through now, uh, and the P80, which as you can see is just to the left there, uh, is primer is twofold really. One is obviously internal design. The 90 has got the island bed at the rear here and has got uh, an electric drop down bed towards the front end of the vehicle. Um, and the uh, P80 has got the U-shaped lounge. So we're looking at, and, and he's a very slightly shorter, by about 500 mil, he's a slightly shorter van. So you've got a good cross section there. That's around about 6.99 meters. This one is at about 7.5 um, and two different internal layouts. So anyway, let's uh, focus on this P90 to start with and, uh, and we'll show you around it. And while we're on the outside, might as well just show you show you into some of these external spaces that we've got simply turn around catches and then this little piece here just allows you to click the uh, click the access hatch into a little bit of storage in there and always useful for your bits and bobs be it your uh, be it uh, from levelling ramps to water attachments, hoses, barbecue attachments, you name it, you can get them in these external lockers. Talking of barbecues, you've got an external barbecue point there. That bit there just uh, fits into your uh, fits into your barbecue system and allows you to get the um, the quick access, which is just it's just like a push and click shut. It's a really fast attachment. You don't once this is fitted to your gas hose, you don't have to do any sort of um, unscrewing or unfixing to uh, to enable quick connect so really handy that um, and then of course you've got this lovely big garage space which goes right across the back of the van um, which is a really good size now ours in our um, ours in our k yacht 79 used to actually fit in um, our electric bikes as well it was that good a size so let me just grab a measuring device and i'll let you know the sort of dimensions of this space as well so we're going to have a measure from let's go across first of all you can just see my little laser dot on the other side there so in total there we've got uh, 2.184 meters that's from uh, the inside of the door frame the back of the device across to the other side which is a, a good size there and then going across you've got a width of 1.041 meters and finally let's just do the do the height of it from the floor upwards so from the floor to the lowest point which is the lowest point of the bed you can just see my laser dot up there so we'll press that and again that's 1.009 meters in terms of uh, in terms of height clearance so check your bikes see how tall they are and see if they'll squeeze in well i had to just turn my handlebars slightly downwards and that allowed then the whole thing both bikes to fit in here and then of course you'll see that in the garage here they've got these useful little little luggage tie downs you've got four in here um, which uh, which were then handy for tying down the bikes or indeed any other of the luggage that you might want to get in here um, you'll see that we've got power in here nice nicely striplet inside here and you'll also see just down there you've got a three pin plug if you want to run anything externally or run anything in the garage we in fact at times also ran our air fryer uh, we had a ninja air fryer which was quite a wide uh, quite a wide thing and um, i quite often plug it into the garage and run it in the garage if we're on site um, uh, as it takes so it takes up a little bit less hob space then so yes a handy plug point to have You'll also see as well in the garage um, that this is part of the 2023 changes to some of the mobile vetters, which has seen Aldi heating come in. Um, you might remember from our channel that we've got um, a Truma Combi 6E in our mobile vetter. They made the swap within the last year or so, 18 months, to Aldi heating. And uh, this is obviously wet heating, so it's uh, it's like water with a, a little additive, a little bit like antifreeze, I guess, which uh, fills your system up. And you can see there's a system of pipes disappearing off 
and you can see him going up at the other side there we'll no doubt see the outlets as well as we can work our way through the van you'll see where the outlets come out um, it means that uh, it means that as well as some vents and a fan that's attached which can blow the warmer air around there are also uh, radiators in the van as well and we'll see those as we uh, as we go through this uh, this p90 what you've also spotted in here is might as well open it while we're in here there's your spare wheel system or should i say your tool system not spare wheel because this uh, like our k uh, 79 doesn't have a full spare wheel so when you get supplied with a vehicle um, in this box i suspect yep there it is so in the box you get um you get the compressor there um, which does the good old foamy stuff um, which uh, never inspires me personally with a massive amount of confidence um, but as long as of course you're not getting a you know a blowout or something like that then I'm told by those that have used it that it does do the job or get you to the nearest tyre company perhaps but as a sort of backup if you like or as a fail safe you might have seen on our channel we've just added a film about adding a um, an underslung spare wheel under the chassis here um, the chassis itself and in fact i can see the holes already um, having done it to ours the chassis just under there just to the rear of the rear axle there has got pre-drilled holes ready for a spare wheel cradle for an underslung spare wheel so you've already got the facility there it's just a case of acquiring the spare wheel carrier and uh, and a fifth wheel itself um, and away you go so it's not a massively difficult process as I say do check out the channel if um, if you're thinking of that because we've got a film of a the fitting of the carrier itself and then you know the purchase and adding of the uh, spare wheel itself so uh, that will give you all the detail you'll need um, if you've got a Fiat chassis like uh, like these have and like we have <coughs> The back um, is already pre-fitted, as you've just spotted here. That's for a uh, Fiamma cycle rack, if you wanted it. That's an option that you can obviously talk to your Marquis dealer about. Uh, I do like these LEDs, though. And the sort of, um, when the indicators work, they sort of move left to right as well. Good high-level lights. Uh, and there's a little camera just up there. You can see yeah, about there. Um, there's a camera there, which is, uh, which is looking down and back. Um, so that's a that's a good system. One of the view, one of the lenses gives you a view right along the back bumper here, so that uh, you know exactly where you are when you're reversing. Uh, what is seven just just on just under seven point five meters backwards. Um, so any extra help you can get from a decent camera system is of course welcome. You don't want to go backing into anything with your new van. That's for sure. Um, there's that three point three pin plug I was talking about and there's some more pipe work and bits and bobs from that from that heating system so what you're looking at there as well of course is the underside of the island bed which we'll have a look at in the middle uh, in the uh, at the back of the van there when we go inside and these of course are the back end of the uh, Fiamma fixings for that bike rack that's on the back um, you'll get supplied when you buy your vehicle new you'll get supplied with a uh, with a mains hookup lead um, and no doubt a box full of goodies that obviously relates to the Exent. I hadn't actually heard of that brand of, uh, of radio when we got the van. Um, not quite sure, still not quite sure where it originates from, but um, it is upgradable. We, um, we've gone through the process of uh, getting the upgrades put in. You can do that yourself just by downloading it to a smart device. And then there's a way in the van of plugging plugging your uh, or sending the, the uh, update into the device itself um, it's a little bit laggier than some of the some of the other systems perhaps um, I've previously had Tom Toms or Garmin's and bits like that um, but despite it being a bit slow to react to some of your button presses I found that the route planning and the uh, and the accuracy of the mapping is actually pretty good um, and it's got points of interest and stuff geared to um, geared to motorhomes so it does show POIs, points of interest as uh, motorhome sites and, and things like that, particularly if you're 
looking for them on the map you'll be able to pick, a, pick them up with the icons that they show you on the display um, and the only other thing which we haven't just popped open here which I'll do while we're at the back is there we go there's that Aldi heater if you wanted to know any more about that then I'm sure if you looked up the uh, that's an Aldi compact 3030 it says on there Aldi compact 3030 that will no doubt show you the ins and outs and workings of uh, of this slight upgrade shall we say to the heating which is the wet heating system that they're now installing in the in these Kias okay um, that's obviously your exhaust from your heating system and the tyres incidentally these are sort of uh, these Fiat alloys uh, I find them useful for a couple of things when we were on site I actually uh, because they're spoked alloys when we were on site I actually run a chain through that and then um, if the bikes are then out of the garage there I used to just run the chain around the back of the alloy and chain into the bikes so if we were away but not using the bikes then uh, it was the perfect place to saw them never had a problem doing that and um, and uh, they stay there quite happily this is your uh, toilet cassette access just pop these two buttons there and then that gives you access to your toilet cassette see the little blue lever under there that's just it you just hold that up and that allows you to slide the whole thing out there we go and you can just see the cavity there that it leaves and it uh, it's as simple as this the operation is as simple as when you uh, when you're inside and you uh, and you open the hatch on the toilet it basically activates this this sliding hatch there um, which then uh, collects the contents of your toilet um, little handle built in there ready for emptying it and uh, and on the top there as well this is your emptying filler that rot this rotates out unscrew it and uh, and then empty away not forgetting not forgetting that as you empty press the button at the back because that allows air in the other end so that it empties properly so yes press button down don't forget that when you're emptying or as you might have a toilet mishap not to be looked forward to i can assure you gas locker um, so it looks pretty similar to the same size as ours um, and therefore what we've currently got in ours um, from new we had two we added two six kilo uh, propanes to it the orange ones but then when we went to europe um, we uh, i wanted to take a little bit more so i've added a 13 and a six um, and i haven't added two 13s because the catch on the door there uh, meant that as it shuts it actually the 13s are that big in the locker that uh, the door handle if i had the 13 on this side wouldn't quite uh, catch properly so uh, i certainly i know in my k 79 can't take two big 13s but you've obviously got a 13 and a 6 option at least in here which would uh, which would get you a fair way regulator obviously built in at the back there so that's your gas locker um obviously your mains hook up just a little lever there to the uh to the left of the plug which you press down to release the plug you can see it now coming back out there and then as you put it in that just that holds it secure and then finally on the outside here that's your water filler fresh water filler um, see it's got two little lugs on the side there and I say that because you can get attachments that because uh, these take you know upwards of 100 litres of water that takes quite a while to fill it and you can get specific fixtures as long as they match these two lugs each side um, you can get attachments that you take this off you screw in the filler and it's got a hose attachment on the end so you just merely clip your hose onto it and uh, then you're not stood with a hose twiddling your thumbs for about 15-20 minutes while it while it fills it's a hundred litres especially if you've got a slow water connection so that's quite a handy little uh, a handy little mod that you can get yourself and pop in one of the lockers that we've already uh, gone round and then we're back round to the front to the uh, to the cab entry so what we'll do is we'll head in the habitation door we'll obviously show you the cab area as well while we're inside um, oh yes and just uh, just before we head inside that's your standard diesel of course a euro 6 engine in this 2023 p90 and therefore at the moment euro 6s of course don't pay 
the uh, congestions or the emissions charges yet. I suspect in another five or ten years that might be a different picture. But there we go. There's us into the P90. Let's just look at this door entry point as well while we're at it. Um, you can see hanging on the door here, you've got your little refuse bin and also you've got built in there, you've got your blind there which concertinas up from inside the door. Um, you can actually activate the lock from the inside um, and uh, it obviously doesn't set any alarms or anything like that but you can obviously lock yourself in at night if you prefer to be locked away. Um, as you come in you've got entry lights for those are, you can just see they look after most of the interior lighting. Really nice lighting in these. It's all that sort of recessed LED, which is, a, which is a lovely finish, both high and, if I just pop those lights again, you'll see that, both high and low. Um, looks really nice, really effectively done, the lighting in these mobile vetters, together with the nice light finishes and that sort of smack of, um, smack of Italian design down to even this, uh, even the little panel on the underside of the bed there is nice. Yeah, really nicely lit, particularly at night. Obviously, you can imagine it's quite a nice, uh, a really nice effect. Okay, let's come on in. So if we start up at the front, obviously both of these front seats will rotate. Uh, you've got a catch just down here there. And if we lock that, uh, lock that catch back, there we go. And then just slide it round. Then you obviously get that lovely rear-facing seat. This one too. Um, again, that's just the handle back. And then that just spins round. It just manages to avoid the handbrake and the steering wheel on ours. On ours, it's actually a bit fiddlier because A, it, as it rotates the seat, it catches the handbrake if the handbrake's on. So I leave the handbrake off, but then you sometimes you also have to drop the steering wheel down as well to make the chair then properly rotate but either way it gets uh, it gets into that lovely position where you've got the ability to sit as i sit down here oh yeah that is very comfortable i sit down and enjoy the company perhaps of friends or just share this space yourselves uh, the seats have obviously got um, standard sort of fiat type adjustments or mobile vetta adjustments um, both um, both your lumbar, lumbar functions there. They've also got the uh, arms that drop down there which are adjustable using these little rollers here which uh, depending on which way that roller goes depends on how high that arm sits up or down. Um, and then obviously seat back adjustment as well. So, um, so very nice and comfy these front seats particularly if you're doing long range. I must say on our uh, Croatian run down uh, the back end of last year uh, four weeks down to Croatia and back, they uh, I never uh, never had any sort of um, any sort of driving or driving uh, aches and pains. They're really comfortable seats for distance uh, for travelling a long distance. Um, usual sorts of steering wheel controls. Um, very slightly, very slight changes to the dash, but still still uh, a non-digital dash. That's that Xent radio that I talked about. Um, together with your heater controls. This is obviously, as I've put on the data there, on the screen, this is um, our uh, auto, nine speed auto box. Um, and you also got there, you'll see that drive mode also gives you sort of two or three different drive modes, um, which, uh, which you can find a lot more detail of actually in the manual itself. Um, sort of there's an eco mode and, a, and one or two others. You've got uh, your standard sort of switching as well. Um, that one there does the front windscreen. Um, you've can obviously got the ability to lock all the doors, your hazards. You've also got a, a, hill, uh, a hill descending function, which just allows you to hold um, hill descent gears for longer. So it sort of overrides the, the will of the automatic to go up to a higher gear, um, just to enable a bit more engine braking. And then all the little cubbies that you'd expect or uh, know from if you've previously had Fiat's, they haven't changed much for many a year. In fact, drinks holders down the bottom there. Um, under the floor there, you've got access to the main um, chassis battery, so the engine battery in effect. Um, and 
under these seats as well, there is, you can just see there, if I try and pop this one up. So you can just see under this seat there, they've popped in um, some controls for the Audi heating itself. Um, now what we've, what we've actually got in ours, and then you get in a lot of Fiat's, um, a lot of Fiat's is, um, is this is the storage area for that black box with all your spare wheel tools, your wheel changing stuff. Um, so it appears that what they've done here is they've put the actual heating controls under there, which means it's taken away that space for that black box. So I'd imagine, um, not certain, but I'd imagine that the black box now would have to live in your garage um, because its space, its bespoke space has been, has been reassigned by Mobile Vetta. Okay, so um, as you know, or as I popped up on the screen there, this has got four belted seats. So um, we obviously also know that any passengers in the vehicle have got to be facing forward. So when you look around the vehicle, it might no doubt leave you wondering as to where on earth are those belted seats, apart from the little clue that we've got each side. So let me show you how those work, because um, that's quite an ingenious little system. And the way it works is that um, is that you can see there's a, as a separation of the seating down there and what it means is you pop out this piece of cushion so I'll try and juggle this one-handed if I can move that out the way you then take out this bit as well which is just velcroed on there that you can see at the back pop that out the way now this piece then lifts up you've got a little bolt there which just pops across there and stows and then what you do is on the back here there's a little button here, you pull that out, so let's pull that out one-handed, and then this, when you when you get hold of it, once you pull the button out, that pops up, locks into place, and then this, again on Velcro, pops around that way. So there you go, and there, obviously out, come, out comes your seat belt from the side there, together with your other piece of seat belt, which is just down, down there, hiding behind there, which you obviously fish out ready for your passenger if you've got people traveling um, and it's exactly the same as you can see under there exactly the same with uh, with that side so quite a good little uh, and a quite a swift way of just swapping things around um, to get those two extra forward facing belted seats okay let's pop this pop this back down again there we go that slides away and clicks back into place and then we can pop that back up there if I can do it one-handed you certainly can <laughs> now the table as well you'll have seen double leaf so it obviously unfolds and makes a really nice uh, a nice uh, dining space that but as you can see there it um, it rotates as well but it's also got on the side here it's also got a number of different number of different functions. This allows it to do just what it's done there. So you just drop that lever down. It allows the whole thing to rotate. And then what it's also got, it's also got a little catch. This little semicircular catch under here. If you drop that down, you can see because we're on a very slight slope, it actually the whole thing slides back and forward. So you've got fantastic manoeuvrability of this um, and obviously that ability to get it into that position and then open it out because you probably saw it was sagging slightly that's how you have it in the full mode so you sort of turn it because that then provides that additional surface there for this second leaf to then sit nice and level but you've still then got the ability to slide it to and fro depending if you sat at the front perhaps um, or, uh, or backwards and forwards so a lot of uh, a lot of adjustment in that very handy very practical now what i didn't show you as well let's just whip this one out of the way because we've also got some bits and bobs under under the seat as well see the handles there pop this one out of the way okay so if we lift that up there you go there is your habitation battery that uh, at the moment on here they's fitted with a 95 amp hour uh, habitation battery um, and you've also got obviously your some of your main fuse panel there and fuses 
to keep an eye on if you get any problems on site. Do occasionally get, we've certainly had occasions where our main fuse has popped because there's been an overload or something on the on the on the posts that we're on on hook up on and so it's always a good idea to uh, to track down where your sort of main main fuses are and your main trip switches are so that because it always happens doesn't it always happens at 11 or 12 at night when it's dark so make sure uh, when you get when you get your Kia or whichever van you get you know, make sure you know where all your main fuses are just in case you have to go find them in the dark right that's it all put back together again you can see as well that's really nice isn't it look at that nice lit little lit mirror there as you come in um, but also apart from that nice sort of material etched design in there as well you've also got a little pocket there storage pocket and more nice little finishing features here as well with the mobile Veta emblem stitched into the uh, into the fabric there very nicely done um, there obviously is just as you might have seen in our motorhome there is an option to uh, ask for full carpeting all the way through um, we personally love that, uh, love that sort of comforty feel of the uh, carpeting throughout. But um, but the carpets they supply are they aren't sort of glued down or anything. So um, you can either have them, or if you wanted to roll them up, and because you were away with um, with perhaps lots of people, then uh, you might want to keep them out of the way. So there's an ability there just to roll them up and store them away, or leave them at home if you don't need them on any particular trip. A uh, little bit of storage underneath here. Hatches just pop off. We use uh, we use some of our underfloor storage as well. If we're going away for a long time, um, then for non-perishable, some obviously you can't take some stuff through the tunnel, as you know, through the channel tunnel, dairy and things like that. Uh, but certainly things like you know pastas, rices, you can stock up on those items if you wanted to be on your favourite items before you head off or cans. And uh, we use some of the underfloor storage for that uh, for those excess excess amount. Um, and then these little cupboards, little pull out drawer there for all your bits and bobs and your cutlery tray. And then additionally, there's a little catch, just uh, you can just see the little catch here, just there, which you just have to lift that catch up, and then that allows you to slide this all the way out. So, lots of storage there for all your bits and pieces. And then once it's back in, you can just drop that catch down it stops it sliding open obviously all the doors have got these little catches that you operate um, which allow them to open or to catch shut so that nothing slides or pops open when you're going around the first roundabout away from home <laughs> and, uh, that's the last thing you want uh, mixer tap on here obviously hot water control by that Aldi boiler that we saw down in the back garage there a little um, a little sort of wooden type cover which can go over your sink just provides you when it's the covers on with a little bit more work surface pop that on there and as i say you can see here that space is limited so that's why when we bring our uh, air fryer on board um, then uh, i run it in the garage because it just saves taking up that whole hob and you probably want your kettle sat here or um, if you're off grid particularly you would because obviously you've got the choice of the two gas if you're off grid or if you're on grid and on enough power then obviously you've got an induction ring there as well. Um, some of the European sites incidentally um, which you may know but if you don't or if you haven't been over to that part of the world we run on 16 amp generally in the UK which is more than enough to run induction but on some of the French or some of the other European campsites that we went to on our way down to Croatia then the sum is low as 6 amp so um, it's quite likely that if you had an induction on it might just run the induction hole but certainly if you put anything else electric on in the van again you'd probably get that fuse popping and you'd be off under your uh, off to find your fuses to reset it um, so yes be aware of that and just always check perhaps when you're abroad uh, what's uh, what the ampage is of some of the hookups that you're taking um, just in case you don't throw too much through the uh, through the posts you're hooked up to uh, but I do like the fact they've got a sort of proper oven. Ours, if you remember, if you've seen the walkthrough of ours, ours had a sort of oven which sits above what is the fridge freezer here. Ours sort of sits right up there, which is not a, not a fantastic spot, not a good height for be, to be taking stuff out of an oven that's hot. Um, this has got a more conventional setup with the Thetford oven, uh, you know, sitting below the hob there. So I prefer that. That's a nice design. And then there's a little bit of storage down the bottom there together with um, together with your gas you can see that you've got your gas inlets 
for all the different gas devices so you can separate them if you wanted to. You can isolate each one for be at the barbecue point out the side of the van or you've obviously got gas there for the boiler, for your cooker hob, for the oven itself. Um, and there incidentally is also another bit of the Kia 90 you want to know your way to because that's obviously some of those trip switches I talked about um, that we've uh, we've certainly experienced tripping those where, uh, where, the, where the ampage was really low on some of those European sites. Up above, a sort of aircraft style, a little bit of storage in there. Aircraft style, again, they've got those, those little catches there that you just press down, gives you access in. Now, apart from storage, this one has obviously got your TV aerial, um, goes up to the roof, and then that's as simple as unscrewing that white collar up there, loosening it off, that allows you to then push this aerial up, right up to that extent if you wanted to. Um, and then you'll also, note, also see that this actually rotates. Well, what that actually does, it's not a system for getting the aerial up and down. What that actually does, your aerial sits like that on the roof and you can rotate it round depending on where the best signal is. But if you turn this, clockwise and anti-clockwise it actually does that to the aerial um, tilts it into the vertical um, I've not had one yet but apparently there are places where when you look on uh, on the sort of apps that you can get antenna finder is the one I use where you get it up on your phone it tells you where the best signal is for your current park up um, and you can then rotate the aerial round to point towards that. But there are also times where it tells you to have a vertical aerial and that's when you would not only put the aerial up, but you would then turn this to change the angle to an upright aerial. So that's what that's for. Um, and also up there, that's the uh, TV aerial booster as well, which, uh, which should be on. So if you don't get your TVs coming on properly, then make sure that this is doing what it should to and is powered up because that's obviously the bit that sits in between your aerial and your TVs. Talking of which, over this side you can see there that there's a, there's a fit there for one of your TVs to be mounted there. Over the top here as well, you've got another good little storage cupboard and what we've got at the back there, that is your um, solar controller. Now that's a Vetch line, um, it's a PWM controller and it's linked to the single 100 watt panel that's on the roof of this P90, Kia P90. It's exactly the same setup as we had in our Kiot 79. So um, if uh, you're interested at all in upgrading that, because uh, PWMs are the less effective solar controllers, the MPPTs are more effective at using solar. So what we did, I've got a series of a couple of three films that just showed us taking out the PWM controller, taking off the existing 100 watt, putting 350 watts on the roof, changing the controller, and then adding to the batteries in the battery locker, adding an inverter so that we could use more stuff off grid. Um, obviously when in Europe, the sun, unlike sometimes in beautiful Wales, uh, unlike sometimes, uh, the sun is obviously shining a bit more in France, south of France, so, so um, adding and improving the solar is definitely a way to get some really good off-grid time without having to hook up or indeed go to site sometimes. So those are two or three films on the channel, um, but as you can see that was working, was functioning and would certainly give you some functionality off-grid for electrical items um, to help boost your habitation battery, which is what the current solar panel will be linked to. Um, there's obviously also another little another little cupboarding up there and then while we're on the subject of cupboards you can see you've got this lovely space as well here lovely little light coming in from there look at that and of course a built-in extra sort of sunshade and um, down the bottom there you've got your fly screen as well but you can see a lovely opening hatch really lets the air flow in be lovely to have and you've also got more storage in there and across the front here. So stacks of storage, um, stacks of ability to tuck away all your little bits and pieces that you're taking with you. Um, and also, while we're still up at the front, um, you'll also have probably seen that, that uh, there are blinds as part of the fixings. Now these um, on both sides, on the windows, 
exactly the same over the other side. You just squeeze these together and then they just pull out. Um, there are little magnetic strips down there which correspond with the magnetic strip there. So the blinds come across there and then exactly the similar way, squeeze those two together and you just just go carefully with them. They're not, uh, they're not the biggest and bulkiest and strongest of items, um, but that's got a, a metallic strip going on the front which matches up with the one from the opposite. So they pull together and join in the middle. <clears throat> You'll find as well, just a quick, quick word on blinds, um, that uh, in winter particularly, or when it's colder outside, even if you've got your, when you've got your blinds across, when you pull them in the morning, you'll have a lot of condensation on the inside of the windows. Um, so one way around that is instead of using your um, internal blinds, you can get yourself a thermal screen. And thermal screens can be made for just about any, well, in fact, they are made for just about any van on the road. Um, we've got another film on our channel of our trip to TaylorMade Covers, who made the one for our van. And they cover just about any make or model of um, motorhome. Have a look out for that film or have a chat with TaylorMade and I'm sure they can tell you the price of adding a thermal screen to the outside. It wraps all the way around and you won't get a single drop of condensation in the morning, uh, whatever weather you're in, if you have one of those fitted. So just below that storage and the solar, you've got your main controls. You've got a grey water heater there, keeps your grey water tanks from freezing and you've got your control panels. Um, You've got touchscreen access to things from temperature, notification switches, oops, switches where you can switch on your water pump. You, we've obviously got our interior lights on at the moment, uh, or there will be a, the outdoor light is the one that's just above the door here to give you a nice bright light access. Um, and then this one here is your all day uh, heating controls, um, which again, you can set, uh, you can set uh, remotely as well if you want, because on here, We've got, if I can swip along to it, just there, you've got the iNet app, um, and that is an ability for you to use a smart device to be able to interact with your heating and some of the van controls um, to be able to then operate them remotely. Now, this system hasn't got a SIM card capability on the iNet function, so um, I know on our channel we've got a film about adding a SIM card to our iNet system, which means I can send text to our van when we're, you know, the other side of the world technically and switch the heating on. Uh, this one is just when you're in range of your smart device, Bluetooth connectivity, um, but you can then control heating and other controls on your van from your phone, which is quite handy. Um, sitting underneath that, obviously, you've got a really good sized fridge freezer. There we go. Really nice size that. All your travelling European essentials. Okay, so let's move our, on back towards our uh, central island bed feature at the back here. Um, really nice setup. We actually, as you as you probably know if you've seen any of our films, um, then we've got a rear island bed. We just like the setup. Like the fact that we didn't have to bring down the bed each time. This one's the 7.44, uh, this one, so it's almost identical size to ours in terms of length of the van. Ours is the A-Class, uh, whereas this is the coach built. Um, but both of the designs offer this really nice space at the back then, um, with room to get around the sides and the wardrobes and bits that I'll show you in a minute. Um, this one, uh, the bed doesn't go up and down, but it does offer additional storage, um, which is under this front section of the bed. I'll show you that in a sec. Just before we go there though, as we're passing by, um, here's our shower on the right here toilet and sink on the left. Um, this has got a couple of slidey openings here which are held back while you're underway by these little um, these little poppers um, and then obviously if you're going to use the shower this is a this is a lift out section you just pop out that section which then which then opens up the uh, shower tray area pop off these catches and that then allows the door to open really nice that with some hidden lighting down the back there some really nice chrome fixtures there um, and some stowage as well for your soaps and shower gels and bits and bobs. So that's really nicely done that. I do like the lighting as well they've done in there. Little opening hatch up the top there, uh, which is just a press the button job. And then you can set it to different settings there, the first one, or you can go full on open. 
of which we had every single one of them open when we were down at about 40 degrees on the Mediterranean coast, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, looking forward to a bit of that later this year when we hit southern France again. Um, so that's your shout. Um, but there's also an ability, if I come through into this way, the door to the toilet also has a secondary set of catches just there. So what that means is you can open the door, you're now shut from the rest of the van, and uh, you've got like a full-on ensuite from the bedroom uh, with the toilet sink and your shower, certainly for changing or if you're coming off the beach or whatever and wanted a bit more privacy. While well, you got changed or showered, then that uh, that's quite a handy feature to have a double sort of double spaced door. Um, there's your uh, Thetford toilet, um, and that was the setting I was telling you about, where you where the little catch at the side there. That's what that's what open closes that hatch and the cassette we saw. Um, this one also also the whole thing rotates um, so that um, you can actually choose your view for going to the loo. Isn't that posh? You can either look out the door, or indeed you can turn it right round and look towards the, look towards the mirror. Uh, there's uh, there's some of those radiators I talked about. Wet heating system. Ours in our K yacht is all blown air heating, so that's what the oldie gives you the change. It sort of gives you a nice radiator for your towels for drying your towels there, and uh, um, and you also saw those extra radiators of the radiator under one of the front seats. There's also those ones in the garage. Um, but there are also as well little vents you can see dotted around and there is a fan attached to the older heating system which can also blow a little bit of warm air as well as take it to the radiators so that's that really nice sink unit that nice sort of matte finish there and then some more some more storage in your loo roll holder there together with some of your piping and pipe work there we go electric flush obviously with the toilet Right, so let's shut that one again. Um, this has also got as well, um, for additional privacy, you can see I can pop this off, you just pull that little clip out and that pops it out. And then this slides across. Let's just put our shower, shower tray back on. Clip that back, clip that back in, there we go. So I've got another one this side and that slides across so you can completely close off, there we go, so you can completely close off that uh, bedroom area with those, with those pocket doors I think you'd probably call those, slide away doors. Okay, um, as I said this one, let's just move this one out of the way for a minute and I'll show you the other bed in a sec as well. So this one has, if we lift up this one, you can see there, it's got a good bit of storage under there. Um, you can lift up that bit of bed frame. Some really good deep storage in there, a bit more at the back there. Um, and then as you can see there, if the drawer, if the bed is down, then you've got access to a couple of drawers. Down under the bed there. Again, that nice LED lighting as well under there and some more vents just hiding underneath there. And then up the side of each, up the side of the bed, each side, you've got these hanging lockers. Right up the top there. And pretty good space. Um, they are, we've got very similar in our K yacht and uh, you can certainly get, you can certainly get all you need for your European travels or your UK travels in there, that's for sure. Squeeze around to this side, some little tuck away pockets at the side there, perhaps for your um, TV remotes or whatever, and then the second hanging wardrobe on this side. Again, some nice little reading lights, LED reading lights with a catch up the top with a switch up the top there. Very nice, too. And a couple of more aircraft style lockers there with the, uh, with the clips on opening hatch at the back here. These ones are a, are a wind open, so it's just a case of then turning it like that. You can see it just opens up there. Again, fly screen on these and, uh, and sunshade. And if you do, if you are lucky enough to head for the suns of the south of France, then um, just be aware not to have this blind over. If 
if you're in uh, the south of France, if you go away from your van and leave it, don't leave these across, little word of warning, because if you do, then the heat, if you've got 35, 40 degrees of sun, if you've got these down, then, uh, then the heat can actually melt, melt some of these fittings. Um, I've seen one or two stories about that. So um, if you're going away from your van, by all means, leave it vented slightly, but leave the sun. Um, you've got obviously your lighting switches in here. You've got your TV aerial point. There is an ability to fit a second TV in at the back here if you want to. Um, and you've also got a couple of speakers each side which connect back to the uh, main stereo system um, of the van. And if we lift up the lift up the mattress, there you go. Straight down, straight down into the garage area, which we were in a, in a little bit earlier. So the only thing we haven't seen yet is the um, is the electric bed at the front here. So we've got a second double up there. So let me just pop this ladder out of the way because we'll need that in a minute. And to get the secondary bed down, it is as simple as controls there, press and hold and down she comes. So that's as far as it goes. Um, hence you've got a ladder which is this big. Um, and if we just flip that ladder over so that its hook on feet are there. There we go. So they just hook over the bed there under the mattress and you've got your ladder fitted and ready and up you go. So let's just try while we're while we're here, I'll give you an idea of the size of the size and width of that bed because it's uh, it sort of narrows as you can see down this edge here. It, it thins at the bottom. So the size of the bed from from the side here across to that wall there where the laser is 1.362 meters, and it narrows down this side. Going from the back of the device, it measures to the laser point there, and that is 1.159. Yeah, so a little bit of a, a little bit of narrowing there, but plenty big enough, um, and a really nice, nice bunk space there. It's a sort of seat belt type pulleys that uh, that drag the bed back up electrically. So that's that. Let's unclip the ladder and. Uh, Let's pop that back up again. Simple press of the button and up it goes. Very nice too. And even that light built in underneath there. Very nice indeed. So that is the Kia P90. Um, fantastic van. Um, typical Mobile Vetta interior. Love some of that Italian design. Really nice, bright light colours, light fabrics, which really reflect that light, give it a lovely light and airy feeling. Um, one of the main reasons why we ended up back with Mobile Vetta and choosing a Mobile Vetta was that sort of interior light and, uh, and the colours and the colour scheme that, uh, that their Italian designers put through the van. Uh, very nice indeed. Um, if you have any questions, of course, about this, by all means, drop them in the comments below. Um, I might be able to field some, field some of them. If not, then of course, I know plenty of people in that office just there who will be able to, but of course, um, in the description below, I've put the contact numbers for Marquis. So, um, of course, if you want to speak direct to them or this P90 uh, interests you, it is available. Um, if not here in the yard, then certainly to order, or indeed, as it's here in the yard, it's May 2023. Come and have a look at it. It's fantastic. You'll love it. So, weren't those two vans interesting anyway? What did you think of the Kias? Had a chance, had a sneak preview of the footage of the film. I thought they were really nice vehicles. The, mm. You know, the, uh, the internal layouts and the um, mm. aesthetics were good. I really like mm. that. Yeah. Um, but I think the uh, big thing for me was the payload. I, yeah. think, I think that's amazing that you can just pick it up and then have peace of mind that you can mm. carry additional weight, whether it mm. be your kayak, bikes, whatever you're mm. carrying, um, and you don't have to worry about going over the... Uh, the limit yeah absolutely um if you want to incidentally if you want to know a bit more about payload um then check out the channel there's a film on there all about that subject um and sort of how we chose the van 
and then when we actually ended up at the Weybridge to see what sort of weight it was. So check out the channel for a payload in detail, but spot on indeed. So hope you enjoyed, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the films, the look around the Kias. And uh, as always, thanks ever so much for watching. We'll see you again very soon. We will indeed. Thank you. See you guys. Bye guys. Take care.